Good morning. Today, Eric and I are headed out and doing a bee inspection, but first we're going to enjoy this awesome, beautiful breakfast that he made crepes and a mousse patty. And I also have to make some sugar syrup for our bees. They are going through it pretty fast right now. And sugar syrup, super simple. It's just one to one ratio of sugar to water and you just barely heat it up. So the sugar dissolves. The bees love it. I've got four pounds of sugar going in and then I'm going to add four pounds of water. All right, we're ready to rock. Eric got our smoker going. We're checking all three hives today, but I am going to be first starting with the hive that we just installed two weeks ago. Normally you'd wanna check them a little bit sooner than we are checking them, but as I've had the bees more throughout the years, I kinda like to disturb them as little as possible. And I know that that queen most likely is fine. I know that she was released um, two weeks ago when we put her in there with that little marshmallow. So we're just gonna be kinda seeing how well this hive is doing at this point. Oh yeah, they're low. This package hive was one of the biggest that we've ever installed. And I'm sure they're off to a great start. You can see they're just totally right at that feeder. And they've been going through their sugar water about every two days. Yeah, that's really sticky. This hive's off to a great start and we can just tell by how they are in here. They're taking up pretty much all eight frames. The end ones are these insulated frames. I've got to pull those out today and I've got to get that queen cage out of there. But this hive's, they're pretty defensive. I've never really had a hive this new be that defensive. So I may have to actually get my bee suit on every once in a while for this one. Because I don't think there's any brood on any of these, I'm just gonna keep moving them to the side. The queen is probably closer to the middle, but this hive is, I mean, they're jamming. They're doing the waddle dance, so they found food. They are already cleaning the exterior edges of the hive. I mean, usually we don't see that happen until at least like a month in, but I have a feeling this is gonna do really well this summer. Probably check the next frame. Looks good to me. That's three frames in. Yeah. Wow. Looking good. They've got a bunch of cat brood, which is basically their babies, but they're already capped, so they're they're pretty far along. And they have quite a bit of their sugar storage that they're starting. I don't know if it's just on this side or not. I'm gonna turn it around. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of cat brood on this side too. For them to already have the bird there, we're gonna need to add their next box pretty soon. This package, I think it came with some male bees and he doesn't have a stinger. That's what the male bees look like. That's called a drone. And he's a big old chunky bee. <laughs> he's gorgeous. Look at him. So we just found some actual eggs, which means that the queen is in here 
and she's been in here recently within the last like three days and there's just like all the stages of baby brood or baby bees developing which is really cool you get the egg and then they hatch and they turn to this like little chubby larva and then they cap it and eventually they hatch <laughs> She has been released. She was probably released within a few hours. So we don't need this little queen box anymore. Okay. We found the queen. She looks good. It was actually pretty easy to spot her because the bees were doing something interesting around her. I don't know what they were doing, but they were kind of like waddling around her. She's on this frame with their sugar water but i think she's looking for somewhere to lay so we're gonna put her right back since we found the queen and the hive's doing awesome i mean they're doing better than i could have asked for i'm just gonna put these two new drawn out combs in here or foundation and the bees actually drew these out completely themselves so we didn't use any sort of foundation for these frames which is really neat there's even some drone cells versus like the worker bee cells they, they're a little bit larger, that's how you tell. But that is just gorgeous, gorgeous foundation or comb that they drew out all by themselves. There we go. That one doesn't really fit down in there. all day. So handy to have these bees in a bog because there's snow out here and water out here and sometimes I need to clean my hands. That is a pollen patty. We gave them a new full one. It looks like they already ate through their entire pollen patty. Doesn't surprise me and hopefully soon we won't need to feed them that anymore because they're going to be getting a lot of pollen from the environment around us. On to hive two. This is one of the hives that overwintered. We've had them for two, three years actually. And this hive has always been a little bit more sluggish. They're a strong hive, but the, I don't know how to explain it. The queen just, she's kind of like slow in comparison to the other hives we've had. But we noticed this year, we went through this hive probably, we came to check on them about a month ago and she had already been laying and hatched out new baby bees, which is insane. That's like super early. And I'm thinking that they maybe got a new queen or made a new queen over winter because just the, the temperament of this whole hive has changed and that can happen when they get a new queen. They've been just taking the food down like crazy fast. Usually I will pull all of the sugar out of that candy board. They generally don't go through all of it over the winter, but this hive was just like trying to take it down as quick as they could. So I left a lot of the sugar and they have been continually taking it down. I'll probably bring this back to the house now at this point and we'll make it into some sugar water. This hive is bringing in a lot of pollen. They have been for a few weeks and they're doing what's called the waddle dance where they shake a lot and they're telling the other bees where to go get the pollen. Mm. Tastes more like honey. Seen. Right yeah. in the middle? Yeah, I see it. It's like a it's like a pattern. Yeah. That is freaking awesome. Bunch of cat brood. Things are looking good. We haven't found the queen yet. 
so I'm gonna keep looking. So we've got drone cells already. That doesn't surprise me. That just means that the hive is happy and healthy and that they may be interested in swarming or leaving this year if all the conditions are good for them. Eric found the queen. She's gorgeous and she's jamming. I was gonna say, I'm not sure if that's the same original queen. She's not marked or anything. She would have been three years old if it's the same queen from when we first got this package. But sometimes they're more blonde, like you probably saw in that first hive. But this one's really dark. And I don't remember if this one was always dark. So not really sure, but they're doing good. We're also removing these like little insulation frames we had. We're gonna be putting in two blank ones. And this one actually has wire on it. So this was wax foundation that we bought. It's small cell and they built their own comb on it. This hive is all cleaned up. We got rid of any extra comb and we're just putting them back together. Pretty sure it is starting to rain on us as well. Make sure that works if we do that. Slow just pushing. We're on to the third hive, and this hive unfortunately is really not like the other two. They did overwinter, but they just didn't come through as strong. So that's the queen. We already knew she was in there, but they're really not laying that much brood. Oh, she's got a lot of eggs. We got a lot of eggs right here. Well, that was definitely really quick because there is not much going on in here, sadly. Let's get this on there. We gotta give them some sugar. They haven't really grown more than when I last checked them is probably a little over two weeks ago. They, they have started to take some of the sugar down since we've condensed them and put them a little closer to the middle. And there is brood in there. It doesn't look like they have a lot of bees to take care of it, unfortunately. I could probably give them some of the brood from the other hives, but being that their numbers aren't good, I'm just not gonna do that. I'm gonna do some research. I'm gonna see if maybe I can add some of those bees to this hive and give them a more of a jump start. Otherwise, I'll just let them be. And sometimes that's just the case. Not all of the hives are the exact same and this one clearly just is struggling a little bit. But that's it. We are done with the bees for today. You want a shovel? Get it frozen. That's what it is. It's frozen to the ground. Yeah, it's frozen. That's ice. Feeder. Which one? The one they like. It's uh, on the other side, I think, that metal one. The metal feeder? Uh, like the little gutter feeder. Oh. Can I hit, can you hit this with some more? Sorry, I just need a little more stuff in there. Thank you.
doing some seasonal cleaning of our various chicken feeders and bowls. And that's kind of a safety measure that we do every few months or so just to help keep things clean. Right now we're in the midst of breakup, although things are slowly drying up. We've got a lot of like mud and muck and bacteria growing. So we like to keep the chicken's immunity high. Eric added some garlic and apple cider vinegar to their waters. And we also add garlic into their food to help with that. Okay, I think we're all cleaned up. We took the liberty to fill up our 325 gallon water tank earlier today. We store it on top of our Connex in the winter months. So we bring it down in the summer so it's not in the way when we're snow plowing. This thing is awesome. It really helps us when we're processing. And the main thing that I actually like it for, we like it for is watering the garden in the high tunnel. It helps me out a lot. Otherwise we have to go over, turn the generator on and get some, get some water from our well. If you remember, we have all sorts of chicks hatching right now. And we've got a mom underneath the coop with a few of her babies. We're gonna see if we can try and get her moved inside and encourage the babies to follow her. Little cuties. Okay, I'm gonna move over here. That didn't work as planned. Sometimes it doesn't work and it's actually quite a pain. We may end up letting her just sleep outside. As long as she stays on the chicks, they'll be fine. Ultimately, I'd like them to end up in here, but let's see who's already in here. We've got one mom in the corner and she has three little chicks under her. You got all your babies in here tonight? Where are they? Here they are. And we've got two more moms in these brooder boxes that we made. And things this year haven't gone as well as they have in the past. We had a better hen to roo ratio or roo to hen ratio. And the eggs were a little more fertilized in the past. So this year we haven't had as many successful hatches. I think we're up to 10 chicks, which is not very good for four moms, but I'm happy to have 10, 10 little healthy chicks. She's just got one under here. Where is that cutie? Where are you? So that one is only two days old, hence it's still in there with some other eggs. We're just feeding them this local like mixed grains that we buy and it's already milled so it's perfect. I don't have to blend it for the chicks. The moms prefer it dry. We soak the majority of our chicken food but they like it dry so this is how we're feeding it to them. Right, she finished all her food earlier. We're super excited for these guys this year. This is an Icelandic black chicken. We don't usually get a lot of blacks in the line. Oh my gosh, you were gorgeous. I've never seen you up close. We're gonna put him back, him or her. Could be a boy, I can't quite tell right now. Those little chicks are almost a week old, I believe. And sometimes the moms are really, they're all different. This one is a little more reserved. We've never seen her be a mom. 
So she's a first year mom and she wants to stay in there with her babies. Some of the other ones will go out on like day two. So the chicken is literally a, practically a newborn and they'll take them outside all day and venture with them and just sit on them when they get cold. So we're just gonna keep her closed in until she shows us that she's ready to come out. And we also have a bunch more that are sitting on some eggs. So hopefully we start to get more chicks around here. Oh gosh. Okay, that is it for now. So good night and we will see everyone in the morning. Welcome to our high tunnel. It is midday and it is very, very hot in here. Our high tunnel has filled up since you last may have seen it. So it's completely full now. There's plants everywhere. Some of these plants aren't actually staying out here at night. The ones in the tub still go back into the house at nighttime because it's a little bit too cold. We have been right around the frost mark. So hovering like 28, 32 each night, it just kind of fluctuates. That's still way too cold for some of our warm crops. So I have cucumbers, basil, and just a few other bell peppers, plants like that inside the house. Let's walk through and show you what's growing. So first down here, I have, I have kind of a mixture of things, but it's predominantly what I'm gonna call mustards. It's just a lot of different mustards. And we also grow bok choy, mizuna, spinach, things like that. So our early greens, and those need to get started really early because they will bolt really quickly with our long light hours. I know we're already over 15 hours of light every day, I'm pretty sure. So I like to get those really big before we transplant them and then we can get those greens and eat them for about a month. Right here I have, I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's either tat soy or tat sai and it's an awesome green. I need to thin these guys. You can see some of them have more than one growing and usually they do a lot better if you just have one isolated plant like that. So. I gotta go through and nip those. I also have various lettuces and arugula growing in this section. I'm just gonna be hitting these with water as we kind of go throughout here because it gets really hot in here. That's the beauty about the plastic. It does a wonderful job at heating up the air in these plants, but it does lose a lot of that heat at night, of course. So I just have to keep an eye on all these plants to make sure they don't dry out. These two big bins have our tomatoes, a lot of tomatoes and the tomatillos. And everything looks really good. I really can't complain this year. 
a lot of stuff got really big in the house and it looks really nice and strong and healthy. I pushed everything back like our tomatoes and bell peppers about two weeks because they always get way too big in the house and you can tell it, this one's already ready to be planted but I really like these clear cups. I use the red, the styrofoam, and then these clear ones. And the clear ones are the easiest to tell if you're overwatering or underwatering, obviously because they are clear. The styrofoam tends to dry out more and then the red cups tend to kind of like hold more of the moisture so they stay more wet. This particular variety is a Roma tomato and we just started all this stuff from seed out here, these guys too, and we transplanted it up a while ago and that's, that's why it's been able to get so big in this little container. Probably my favorite plants in the whole high tunnel are these ones right here. And I started these earlier. They are brassicas, so cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, kale, things like that. And I started them a little bit earlier because I wanted them to get bigger quicker. Like Brussels sprouts, you have to start really early. Unfortunately, I don't have that many that are this size. And that's kind of sad because we won't be able to harvest those kinds of things that early in the season. We're gonna have to wait till a little bit later. Usually we're harvesting, you know, cauliflower and stuff like that in July. But that, it is okay because we do have a long cool season and these plants do like long cool seasons. This is cabbage. This is called Aubervillers and i love it i love that leaf it's like this huge round beautiful leaf and they have these nice crinkly uh, cabbage heads i usually don't start a lot of these more than six weeks ahead of time before they go out because they do grow pretty quickly and you don't really want them to get root bound so these ones are going to be going outside hopefully in two weeks or so we still have a lot of snow out there this is a really cool variety of kale i have two different kinds in there one's dazzling blue and it has a really pretty purple rib you can actually see that right now, but it's a lot more prominent once the plant gets older. And these are painted, not painted, they're called red veined sorrel. So they grow, they take so long to grow. I don't know why, and I have to thin them. There's just a bunch of them right there. Really neat though. We're moving right along. It's nice to not have stuff in the rows. It gets pretty muddy. Thankfully the mud has dried up, but I do have to have the little bins in the rows and then I just try to keep everything else on the actual raised rows that we plant in. These are flowers that are germinating. So I've got like poppies and bachelor buttons. And then we've got Swiss chard over here just out for the day. We have some of our squash and sunflowers in this bin and those do not stay out here. It's just way too cold for that. In fact, last year, pretty crazy stuff. This will be our fourth year gardening here. We had a frost last year, June 1st, the night of June 1st, which is not unusual you know, probably for like back in the day, but I think that's a little unusual for recently, the, the last 10 years or so. So that kind of threw me off guard and actually hit our squash really hard. I lost a lot of them, but generally we are by like May 15th, we're usually done with our last frost. And in fact, I think there's been two years that it was closer to like mid April. So hopefully we get lucky. I think it's May 6th today. So we probably still have a few more frosts coming. This is kind of neat. We have a zucchini that doesn't have any color. So I'm going to try to hang on to this one and see, see what it does. I've got a whole slew of flowers here. That was a huge priority for me this year. And it took away from the vegetables, that's for sure. But as I've gotten older, I really like flowers and I haven't spent that much time learning about them. So I wanted to plant a lot more this year from seed and a lot of them are annuals but that's okay because I've tried the perennial thing here and not that many plants actually will overwinter. It's really, really hard on them and sometimes they'll come back, sometimes they won't. So I figured it was worth the effort for the annual flowers and hopefully it's a hot summer and they do really well. You can tell I think it's gonna be a good year because I'm trying artichokes again. Artichokes don't do that well here, even if you start them really early. I was a little late on these, so they probably should be a little bigger than this, but usually we'll get like a little tiny artichoke. There's a lot of plants that grow wonderfully here and fabulous, but I'm stubborn and I really like to try the ones that don't grow that well here. Back in Oregon too, we were always growing like zone 10, zone 11 plants that are native to somewhere else. And usually there's varying success with that. We've got more mustards and lettuces back here. This is a variety pack lettuce. So it comes with different lettuces. And usually what I'll do is I'll thin them out once they get a little older and I can tell what type of lettuce I'm thinning out because it's, it's pretty hard to tell when they're really small. So we can kind of pick and choose which ones we want. These herbs right here are my pride and joy. I started them very early and they're huge. This is oregano. We've got parsley, 
huge thyme and then sage. And these do not overwinter. I mean, I have had oregano overwinter, but it, it struggles. So it's not really a plant I can count on overwintering and then harvesting from. So I always started again from seed. So these are our herbs. We grow a lot of them again because they don't overwinter. So we only get them for that few short months. It's pretty crazy actually. And I also have some winter savory right here. That looks pretty good actually. Back here we have more flowers and more brassicas and kohlrabi. I've got a lot of kohlrabis. I killed about 50 kohlrabis earlier this year. I sacrifice them is what I call it. Every once in a while, if it looks like it's not gonna be that cold, I'll leave something out to see if it's too early in the season. And it was too early in the season. So that's what happened there. So all of these are small. We have celery. This celery is looking pretty good. I did leave it out one night and it got a little cold, but I mean, for the most part, it looks really good. This is our Brussels sprouts. They look awesome. We grow jade and it's a hybrid variety. I have various containers out here. I really like these six packs, but I ran short on these this year. I always run short on them. So I use little cups and other little containers that I have. The tables are really nice for that. So we can keep them organized and up off the ground so they don't get kicked. I had to grab another water. Very handy to have our tank filled up outside because I go through like two of these in a day sometimes. There's a lot of plants in here. We've got onions and flowers and shallots and leeks on this table right here. They've been out here for a few weeks. They do really well in these cold temperatures. I'm learning this year what flowers will tolerate the cold temperatures and it seems like most of them do okay in it, but not all of them. Because the onions have been out here for a while, I am watering them a lot and so their nutrients in the soil is getting depleted by that water. I like to have like a little kelp or like some sort of fish liquid fertilizer. Usually they're organic. Um, and you can just put like a really small amount of this in like a gallon of water. And I will feed the plants, especially the onions, things like celery, things that like a lot of nitrogen. I'll feed them maybe once a week, maybe every other week, just depending upon the plant's color. These are starting to get more green. So I know that they're already, that fertilizer is already working. I did just feed them. I always like to use some sort of like liquid fertilizer though, because these plants are in their containers for a very long time. Some of them for like two months. Muscle strength. I'm super excited for these snapdragons. I don't know why they just germinated well and they look great and they've been easy and they're cold tolerant. Hopefully they flower and they're awesome. I have some rhubarb here. It's not looking perfect, but we started a lot more of these and I believe our two that we have overwintered, the bed just, well, it's in the process of defrosting, but it just got uncovered from the snow. So we'll see if they made it. Our high tunnel is not heated at all, although that would be very neat. I keep this little thermometer in here and I can't even leave this in here. Honestly, it's gonna break because it, it just will break. It doesn't like the moisture, but I have it right now to tell me the low. I'll set it each night and see what the low was. I think last night it was like 30, but the night before it was 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Supplemental heat would be awesome, but I'm thankful to have this because these plants could not be outside all day, you know, if it weren't for this. Hopping over to the other side, we have more mustards and brassicas and lettuces. These are actually ones that didn't do that well. I had started some of these out here a few weeks ago. It's called cold sowing, so they germinate when they feel like the conditions are right outside, like when it warms up in the high tunnel. But unfortunately, quite a few of them froze. We had too cold of temperatures and it didn't really pan out that well this year. So I had to restart a lot of those. But this is what I have of this section. So some of them did, did work. We've got more tomatoes over here, nasturtium, and some fennel. The fennel actually looks really good this year. This is a good example of why it is hard to manage so many plants and these this is probably because I had different soils mixed up so you can see these ones are dry and these ones are moist so when I water them continually these will just get watered and these will dry out quicker it's just really tricky to manage this many plants but we are doing the best that we can and I would say that all of these fennel look pretty good the corn looks amazing we are growing a variety called early sun glow sun glow and it did not that good last year actually we had it outside and we had like corn kernels this big the best year we ever had was in here however the pollination we didn't have enough air movement so i may try doing them again in the high tunnel they got way bigger and did way better 
but we're just gonna have to leave the door open and make sure we have the fans going really well. These are only about two weeks old. They're huge. We transplanted them from the original pods over to these a while back and they, they're doing great. Got some more sunflowers and dill and then a bunch of zucchini and squash that look really good, I think. <laughs> And now for the not so glamorous, I've got some zinnias here. No one told me that these don't like cold weather, so I had to find that, find that out the hard way. All right, these are a new flower for me, and I just didn't know that they don't like cold temperatures, as you can see. Not very attractive anymore, but there's still some in there. I started some more, we'll see. Maybe I won't have zinnias this year. We have marigolds next to them, although last year it was the first time growing calendula and I really liked that one and the bees liked it so I may grow a lot more of that in the future although I, I am a sucker for orange flowers and I really love the way these look too. This tray is our peas shelling snow and snap and they're starting to germinate. That was the last thing I had to sow in trays. Everything is going to be now exterior or directly into the ground or the rows um, when the snow actually melts. Well that is it for the high tunnel tour. On another note, I did want to mention something. I got an email the other day and it resonated very much with me. It was a gal who was kind of talking about troubles with gardening. And I feel like we have that as well. I'm sure anyone who gardens does. Maybe we don't talk about it that much. Maybe we do. I don't really know, honestly. But it's been a long road for us. We've been gardening for like seven years and well probably longer than that actually i mean i used to kill a lot of plants back in my day i didn't have anything that was successful including house plants at all so this has taken a long time to get to this point and it's a lot of plants like i mentioned to manage it just takes a tremendous amount of time and effort to get to this level i feel like and space you do have to have a lot of space to garden i really definitely place a lot of the success on mother nature you know the sun the rain all of that and the bugs, the ground, the soil. I think oftentimes we just totally overlook that and soil is so crucial to the plants. It is what is their home, it's their food, it's all of that. So pay attention to your soil if you're not already paying attention to it. Each plant has like their own needs. So once you learn that, you will learn a lot more about how to grow that specific thing in your garden. Clearly you could tell I'm still struggling. We have things that are dead. We have things that have died and dried out or froze this year. We've got a glorious amount of weeds growing in the back if you missed that earlier but this is predominantly most of our food we grow pretty much all of our own produce that we eat we don't just do it for the food we love the food we also do it because we love gardening we love spending the time out here and it's just it's awesome i really recommend it if you if you are looking into gardening and you haven't started already we're not able to show a lot of this kind of stage of the gardening because of the time that it takes but we are gonna try this year to include a lot more short gardening videos and just share with you guys the knowledge we've learned or what what's doing good, what's not doing good, what we're making with that this year. So we'll be seeing you out here in the garden a lot more this year. I have a little more work to do out here and we will catch you on the next episode. I'm hot. I'm like sweating. I think these are so beautiful. Can you look at how beautiful they are? Like, look at that green beautiful plant right there such dark green it brings me so much joy just to look at it that's what i should have said i like the tomatoes those are spiders <laughs>